Now, we'll do it in the same place. Now we're going to emphasize the glove. You got your hand up. You've already separated, got the hand up. Now I'm going to, I'm going to turn all my thoughts and feel of my body to this front arm. So I want the front arm to be out, and out is you're out. It's wherever you feel like it should be. Turn the thumb over, the heel up, and brush your hand back in. Both of you did it pretty well. And finish high with the elbow, high with the elbow against the rib cage. All right, let's do it again. Same, with, same as you're doing. Separate, arm up, just concentrate on the front arm, all the way down. Bring your head right to the target. Bring your head right to me. Right to me, that's it. Go ahead, go ahead. Right through there, go right through there. Right, th all the way through. I'll finish up, finish your throw, right to left. Right to left, finish your throw, right to left. Yeah, John, you're okay. You can, you can pop your leg over. You can pop yours over now, your right foot. There you go, on the toe. On the toe every time. Pull it in, on the toe every time, good. Pull it in, on the toe every time. Pull it in, on the toe every time. Now let's see a little bit more, a little quicker, a little more force on the throw. Okay. Okay, you're going to get in that stationary stride position. Work on the drill you're just working on, except you're going to really emphasize that way a little bit, Brandon. Only you're going to really emphasize getting the arm up, getting this thing, pulling it through and feeling like you're just popping the ball. So it's going to hit and have one, one bounce Boom, hit here and hit Brandon on one hop. You gotta really work on getting your arm up. Get your arm up, down, good. Go ahead and throw it back, Brandon. I'll have you do five. Just no, just throw it back to him. I'll have you do five from here. One more time. This is a good way to get players to feel like you're getting your arm on top because if you drag your arm, you won't get a good bounce on this thing. And what's even better, if you can get a harder, a hard mat and put out there so they hit the mat and bounce up, it's real good. And you could do this in the bullpen. I'd get the gear on the catcher and have the pitcher do this and then even throw short hops in there so you get a downward fly the ball. Good, John. That was good. Well, you're so good, you hit the target. Go ahead and put that cup back and we'll change spots. All right, now the same way, Brandon, you're going to get in a stationary stride position. We're going to do this so you can pop that thing over and end up on your toe. But the big thing is, is separating the hands, getting the hand up, and getting downhill on the ball. So you got to get a little force on there. Get it up, downhill on the ball. Okay. Yeah, get, get you. Yeah, you can, follow, you can follow through and finish on that toe. That, if you finish right, push off like we're doing around that cup, that'll really help you get on top and, and circle. On top. Okay, now where did you release the ball, Brandon? Way up here. That's why it didn't hit that cup. If you hit around that cup, you'll release it in the right place. Better. Now where'd you get your arm then? You really got it up, didn't you? So it was up much better. Okay, up on top, up on top, up on top, down, good. Up on top, on top. Make sure you fix your feet before. See, we're working on this thing. I get just get planted right here with the same stride all the time, same place. Foot, knee inside, and you know, we can come back to any one of those uh, fundamentals anytime we want to. But right now, we'll open that up just a little bit. Work on the inside there. Now we're just we're just taking the top part of your body here and working on getting the arm up and getting well out in front. Get it up, down. Good, that's good. One more time. Get it up, down, good. Well, that's good, you guys are two for two. Last ball, you hit the target. You know, one of the real important things with, uh, with pitching at any level is, is disrupting the timing of the hitter. And you can do that without having to throw a lot of breaking stuff. Uh, breaking stuff is an, is an add-on to what we have here, but if you vary the speeds, and the first thing we try to do is get a pitcher to establish his working speed, whatever that is. On this chart, it says 65. Uh, that would be at, at some point in some youth league. Uh, for college, maybe it's 83, 84. Whatever that speed is that you can get the ball over the plate and hit the target, as these guys are doing here, uh, try to hit him in the right. Uh, and what I would do is I'd look at him and say, okay, get a pitch down at the knees. Throw one down at the knees, John. 
So as John throws it down to the knees at whatever speed that arrives at, that he can do that consistently, that'd be what I'd call his working speed. Now once he's established a working speed, I'd say to John, now let's take about three miles an hour off the speed, but just do it in your head, not your arm. Just a little bit slower. Okay, now for the hitter, that looks like about the same, the, the same action with the pitcher, but it definitely changes the, the speed of the ball by two or three miles an hour, and that would make a heap of difference if I'm measuring a hitter, if I'm measuring a pitcher rather, and I've got him all lined up, 83, 83, 83, and all of a sudden he throws me 180, 81, I'm just a little bit off. So if I can vary the speeds by four miles an hour once I come to a working speed, it doesn't mean that that's as fast as the player can throw. It generally means he can throw a lot harder than that, but he has less control when he does it. So you want to get it whatever he can throw at control at. That's his working speed, and then work very four miles an hour between that. So it would be like throwing one pitch. It's, it's working speed at 65, another speed 64, then to 63, then to 62, and then to 61. And the changeup would be 11 to 12 miles an hour slower than the fastball. So now you've got five different speeds you're throwing, and you're still just throwing with one pitch. Now if you add on to that a breaking ball, which is going to be another 10, 11, 12 miles an hour difference, then you've got another six speed in there, and the slider then would give you a different speed. So you've got a variation of speeds you're working with, and uh, I would really emphasize that when you're working in a bullpen with pitchers. Working speed, four miles an hour variation, add to that the change up, and you've got five or six speeds working for you as a pitcher. All right, you want to trade off, Brandon? Now he's trying to hit him right in the belt buckle. We're trying to arrive at his working speed. And if he can do that uh, two or three times, we'll say, okay, that's, his, that's the speed at which he works, okay. Now I want you to take two miles an hour off that. In your head, not your arm. Just take, just don't throw it quite as hard, but throw the same target. Okay. Now to me, I could see a little bit of difference in that from here. I doubt very much if I could see a great deal of difference from the hitter, except when I started to swing. I'd know that that was a couple miles an hour slower. Now throw a, a three miles an hour slower. Okay, now when you do this, and if you do this enough in the bullpen, we won't be letting up on the ball. We'll be throwing it with the same arm action, the same body movement. It looks the same, except in your head, you're saying, I'm not gonna throw it quite as hard. And you can take two, three, four miles an hour off the ball. You go ahead and do it again. Take about four miles an hour off the ball. That's good. Okay, now I want you to throw back at your working speed. So that's four miles an hour faster. Okay, that's the difference in, in speed, and that would be a great deal of difference to hitter. Now I want you to throw harder than you threw any of those pitches. Okay, that was a little bit harder. Now it was a little bit more wild, but if you get in a certain count, you can afford to be a little bit wild. If somebody's a wild swinger, you say, okay, I got two strikes on him, I'm gonna throw it a little bit harder. Maybe out of the strike zone and you have a chance of getting him. John, come on up now and you do the same thing. I'm going to have John start out his working speed again. John's going to start out at whatever speed he can get the ball over. And the beautiful thing about this is it's different. Okay, hit him in the chest. I mean, hit him in the belt buckle with the ball. I just pick a spot. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, one more time in the belt buckle. That seems to be a nice, easy, fluid motion for John in the belt buckle. Okay, now we're going to take two miles an hour off the pitch. Two miles an hour. Okay. Did you feel like it's a little different? Yeah. A little different speed? All right, three miles an hour off this pitch without letting up. Just nice and easy. Good. All right, now I want you to add the fastest pitch you've thrown today. Faster than any of those. Now that would make a difference with the hitter at this youth league right there because you've and you haven't thrown any breaking stuff. Now if you add to that, we'll just have John finish off with this. I want you to throw a cut uh, fastball without turn your wrist over. This will, I guarantee you this will be a different speed than, than the others. But you can also work with that speed the same way. You can say, okay, work your working speed with a cut fastball. Working speed with a cut fastball. Yeah. Okay, now take a little bit off of that one. We're, cut fastball, take a little bit off of it. Okay, 
that would be a that would be a different look for a hitter. Now add on your pretty good fastball with a cutter. Yeah. Cutter? Yeah, cutter. Good. That's good. Now those those are I think those are real deceptive things for a hitter. They're kind of sly because you're you're seeing a fastball, but you're seeing various speeds. And if you can get a hitter disrupted a little bit, you you start widening the strike zone a little bit. In other words, you don't have to throw a strike sometimes to get a guy out if you. Yeah, you, you come up and in, and if you get him having a variation in speed, you got some problems. Uh, I want to want to thank my two uh, pitchers for helping out today, and I'd also like to uh, thank you for watching the tape. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something from it. Uh, it was my pleasure to share my experience with you. Thank you. Bob Bennett ranks as the seventh most winning head baseball coach in NC2A Division I history. During his 34-year college career, Bennett's teams averaged more than 40 wins a season. With 32 winning campaigns, 26 consecutive, the results are impressive. 1,302 victories, 17 conference championships, 21 NC2A tournament berths, 32 All-Americans, 9 first-round draft picks, 2 College World Series appearances. His teams were consistently ranked in the top 25. The 1988 team vaulted to number one during Fresno State's school record 32 game winning streak. Coach Bennett earned Conference Coach of the Year honors 14 times. In 1988, he was named NC2A Coach of the Year by the Sporting News. Bennett has also been heavily involved in baseball at the international level, coaching the U.S. national team four times. In 2000, he earned the prestigious Lefty Gomez Award. Known for his fundamentally sound ball clubs, more than 200 of his players went on to the professional ranks, including 35 major leaguers. Considered one of the nation's experts on catching fundamentals, Bennett has published two books on the subject and is in demand at clinics throughout the country. A leader on the collegiate baseball front, Bennett is a former president of the American Baseball Coaches Association. He serves on the Hall of Fame and All-American committees within the ABCA and is a member of the ABCA Board of Directors. Bob Bennett continues to influence amateur baseball as an accomplished coach, author, and consultant.